Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode in our Interactable Items series, where we're diving into the world of Niagara systems and adding visual effects to items that will interact with the player on pickup. If you haven't checked out the other episodes in this series yet, I highly recommend you do that first. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So let's go ahead and get started. For this tutorial, we're going to use some pickup Niagara assets that you can actually find for free in the marketplace. I will add those to, I'll add the link in the description so you can download and follow along. And then we're going to add these to some of the items that we've already built. So to start, let's go ahead and open up our item data structure. We're going to add a couple more variables in here. The first one we're going to call Niagara mesh. This is going to actually replace this mesh. We'll leave that alone for now. And then we're going to call this Niagara FX. This is what it's going to play once we interact with it. So for both of these, we're going to choose a Niagara system. Go ahead and save that. Close it down. Then we're going to go to our item data table. And here we're going to assign the Niagara mesh, what we want it to look like. Um, for collectibles, we want this diamond. And when we pick it up, we want a coin burst, maybe. For the time, let's go ahead and do a lightning symbol and then we'll do the lightning little shower effect and then for color let's just do something colorful this looks colorful and let's see what just magic one looks like. So now let's go set our item. Go ahead and close this down. Save, close down. Open up your item. And in here we have access to the Niagara systems that we just got. So we want to get those from the uh, data table. Right now it's still random. We'll change that when we're showing it off. First, we want to set the Niagara effects. So we're going to come over here to our item, click, and we're going to add a Niagara particle system. And let's call this Niagara mesh. It's not really a mesh, but that's what we're calling it. So I know what it's going to look like. Let's go ahead and say set. Niagara system asset right there, and then we'll put the Niagara mesh, drag that over. So now when this is on begin play, we'll start getting our random items. And then the Niagara mesh will update based on that. So let's go watch this items drop in. You see the pickup lightning, there's the pointer. So now we're actually going to remove the static meshes that we have made. We'll no longer need that. Let's go ahead and drag that there, drag the glitch into that, go ahead and um, disregard. Let's do it this way so that we keep this item, the physics for this item. Let's go ahead and we'll take away set simulate physics and we're no longer going to set this uh, mesh. So let's get rid of this for now. 
and let's get rid of static mesh. We'll keep that empty for now. We no longer want to set the material. Let's drag these over. Okay, so now if we go play, we should just only see the Niagara mesh. That's okay where they're at. We're, we're not actually going to have these fall, so we're going to move that down in our scene. And then also for now, we're going to get rid of our random. So this is no longer going to select random. Let's go into our item spawner as well and I'm going to no longer do this on an event take just for this example let's change this out for a just a begin play so this will generate one item per blueprint I am going to keep this random for now so we'll just see what we get and then go ahead and duplicate this item spawner out in the world. And then go ahead and play that. So now we got a bunch of random items that we can still interact with based on their item attributes lightning with speed um, this was color we no longer are setting the color so that's gonna we're gonna have that affect something else uh, momentarily play again see if we get any of the collectibles there's some collectibles if we click those they disappear and add to our counter still so let's go ahead and make these items interactable with our player. The first one that the player is already set up to interact with is the collectible. That's how we're updating this number. So let's go into our player for now. And a man. And over here, we're going to add a Niagara system. Just keep that as Niagara for now. And just to test this out, we're going to, after it's collected, drag this out, and we're going to set Niagara system asset. We'll have this update based on the Niagara FX that come in, but for now we're going to test to make sure that this is going to work. We were going to use the coin burst for this one. So after collecting, we should see coin burst, and we do. We only saw it once though, so we'll need to go into our character, and we need to say reset system. So after it plays, it'll reset. Let's go ahead and make this little higher so we can see this a little easier. We can speed up. And now we see the system resetting and replaying. What we want to do though, we don't want to hard code this um, Niagara system in here, we actually want to bring in the Niagara FX. So we're going to open up our collectible interface. 
and inside of our collect item, let's add a, an input. This is going to be named Niagara FX. It's going to be a Niagara system object reference. So we can close that down for now inside of our item. We want to we want to get that variable over here after we've called this function. So in here we're going to say promote to variable. And we're going to set this um, we can go ahead and leave that name for now the auto name is pretty good it's exactly what it is uh, save now we'll go this gets saved once we generate our item so if we go into the Coin, the collectible is this one. So let's go ahead and bring this out. Pass that variable there. So now inside of our player blueprint, we're going to see that we have our Niagara effects being passed in this way. Let's go ahead and move this over the top. And now we want to set that. So now we should still see the coins exploding. And we do. So let's go ahead and do the other items that we have. For the other items, if we look at our collect item function that's coming from our interface, we want to do something similar but different logic for those for each of those. So let's look at what we're doing here. We're passing to the click item and then we're destroying. I don't know if we want to destroy each of these, but we might as well. Let's start with the uh, set global time dilation. We want this um, open up the collect interface. We're going to add another one. And then let's call this one just time item. Uh, time item works for now. Go ahead and add an input. <clears throat> this is also going to be that Niagara FX. I'll save that. And then if we go into our item here, when we set this, let's actually just run it into the, we need to set up the message in this first. So let's go ahead and open up time item. We're going to take this logic over here for now. So now in our item, we can call that same time item. We 
we need to call it from our actual player. The one that says message is what we want. It's sending this message to our player. And then same thing, we want that the same out row here. Let's see what the lightnings look like. So I'm not actually seeing one for this. That is because I'm not actually calling this into, sorry, right here. I'm not setting this. I jumped the gun on that. So let's go ahead and say set Niagara system asset. test and see what it looks like. So now while I'm fast, it's see how long that stays. Looks like this one never goes away, which I guess is kind of what we want if we're now always fast. And if I choose something else that overrides it, For the speed, let's actually interact a little bit differently with this one. Let's put this all on a timer. We'll just say, give it a delay of about, just for testing purposes, say five seconds. And when this is complete, We want to reset this back to one. Just gonna need that part. And then I want to reset my Niagara system. By just leaving this blank, it should reset it. Let's look and see what that looks like. Uh, save. So if we interact with our lightning, sorry, if we interact with our lightning, we get our little lightning Niagara system. It goes away after a few seconds and then our speed went back to normal. So that's what we want. Like that. Now for the final one for color, not really sure um, what we'll do to the actual item itself, but for now we'll just have it update the Niagara system within our character. So same thing as before, we'll go into our collect interface, add a function, call it color item, Go ahead and add in a new variable. I can add a new variable, Niagara FX. Go ahead and close that down. Inside our player, we're going to have access to <clears throat> color item. And for now, we're going to do just setting this system here. Gonna see what that looks like. Go back into our item and for set material, we're no longer setting a material, so we're going to just
from here say color item this should be that little magic Niagara that we set up I am forgot to set the actual effect itself. Let's try that again. Coin burst. Little star. Mm, I guess for now that shows that it's working. Not really sure what else we would do with this one. <clears throat> Without changing the color of the object, we really don't have much else to show off. I can, I guess, change the mesh of my character. So let's bring that mesh out here. And let's just say set material. And for now, let's do just any color. I kind of liked this with the binoculars. So we'll keep that for now. And then after, we'll do a delay. Again, just a little five second delay is probably good. Then we're going to reset the material back to normal. And then we're going to reset the Niagara. I I think I can actually just use this instead of resetting it that way. Let's test that. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, so I can't just use that reset. Let's go ahead and change this out. Go to this above. So now they both changed back. The ALS player is set up in a bunch of little meshes and it's pretty complex the way it's set up. So we're only seeing right now his pelvis area changing, but it's working for now. Ideally, you wouldn't want to use the same Niagara system for each of these. As you see, they are each going to the same position on his body, but you might want the lightning to be all over the place. You might want this to be over his head instead of in his stomach area. You might want that to be right there or maybe off the ground. So we can actually go into the player, and this is... You don't have to do this. This is just so you have a little more control over what's doing what. Let's call this one Niagara Coins. Make a couple more of those. Niagara Time. And then we'll do... I'm going to call it a star. <clears throat> that seems to be more fitting for it. And then for color, that is our star. So instead of the Niagara coins, we want this to be Niagara star. Let's 
Same thing here. And then in the viewport, we want to grab the Niagara star and we want this to maybe load above his head. Go ahead and change out this one for the time. I kind of like the time where it's at, but I want to maybe make it a little bigger. And then for the last one, let's do coins. Go ahead and retest these. Kind of like coins where they're at. We're going to leave that one alone. Coins work. Lightning works. So that's going to do it for this episode. In today's tutorial, we set up some Niagara effects for our interactable items and even added some effects for the player after interacting with these items. In the next episode, we'll finally dive into the HUD interactions, showing you how to display health, speed, and collected items on the screen for a more immersive gaming experience. As always, don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for future content. Happy developing, and I'll see you in the next one.